Hello, uh, this is part two. So to create this uh, restructuring effect, uh, we're going to use a particle system. Uh, so let's start with that. Uh, we are going to select this uh, mesh and go to the particle system and add a new particle system. If you play back, we should start seeing some particles. And um, for some reason, I'm not seeing them here. Okay, they are there. Let's first check out uh, the normals and see just to make sure that uh, we have the right orientation. Great. You can see, so we have the particles. I think they're not now, so let's try 5,000. Now they're just falling uh, on, and uh, they're just falling to gravity. Uh, so are we also going to use uh, the explosion modifier to kind of uh, explode or yeah, explode other uh, buildings into the particles. So if we go under the modifier panel, we can add an explode explode uh, modifier and can see uh, they will take on every every face will take on a particle movement you can see that uh, so let's just go to the particle settings and uh, tweak uh, the animation of the particles so if we turn on rotation and uh, under angular first turn on dynamic and uh, these particles should rotate should rotate as well uh, if you don't have that thing if you don't have dynamic on they will just fall straight down uh, which is not very real realistic so turn on dynamic and then if you want you can turn on angular velocity and uh, that means that uh, the velocity the the rotation of these uh, particles or faces uh, will be determined by the the angular velocity of these or the rotation of these uh, particles will be determined by the velocity of the particle and yes yeah, so that's what we have uh, i think i'm going to divide subdivide this a bit further uh you can also try and see how many faces you have here so you can see we have 624 faces uh, which is less than the particle, particle count we have here. So I'm going to subdivide this until we have something at least close to that. So, uh, but I'm not just going to randomly subdivide. I'm just going to add uh, loops where I, I think we don't have enough. So like there, there, there. Uh, this is a bit far from the camera view, so I'm not going to add that many particles or subdivisions. You want to have more detail closer to the camera than farther to the camera. So, I see we have around one th uh, one thousand faces. Uh, sorry, yeah, one thousand and four hundred faces. And continue adding a few. I uh, remember also the more faces you add, uh, the more computing power you're going to need to. Uh, to simulate this and see this is what we are getting so yeah let's work on other things so i don't want them to fall randomly like this and see it to be distracted randomly like this i wanted to start from this side as it eats up the city like you see we're having here okay so for that what we're going to do is first turn off all the forces that are creating uh, the movement of the particles and uh, also you see that uh, sometimes uh, the particles just stop moving that's because uh, the, part the lifetime of the particle has stopped and uh, when the particles die uh, the plane of uh, these faces also stop moving so I'm just going to increase that to about 200 uh, frames at least be more than uh, the lifetime of our timeline and uh, that should stop them from stopping mid-air like that uh, another thing I want to do is uh, turn off gravity so we just go under force field and turn off force weight and uh, turn on turn off gravity so that they don't just fall down uh, another thing I don't want to have is uh, any movement uh, in the particles because I want to control that movement uh, with an empty or control object so let's go under uh, 
the velocity and turn off the normal. Uh, that's what is causing uh, that moving, that movement. You can see we don't have any movement until uh, this frame here, uh, which is I think leftover cache, and I'm not sure how to delete that sometimes. But it shouldn't be there. Maybe it's a bug. There are a lot of bugs. Uh, you can see now it's not there anymore. We are not running into that issue anymore. So everything is in is in the position we want it to, to be. Uh, so now let's start controlling uh, the movement of the particles. So we're going to add an empty here. So empty. Let me change the display type to a sphere. Let me increase its size a bit like that. And uh, I'm also going to animate it. So add a keyframe there. I'm just going to have it follow this path here. Or you can just to make it more accurate, you can just select a loop, a middle loop uh, in the mesh, shift it to duplicate it, and then P to separate it. Let me first hide this part. So where is my loop? Yes, here. This here. And uh, right click, convert, and convert it to a mesh. Let's make sure you have it selected. Some reason I'm not even seeing it. Object convert to a curve. Okay, I'm not sure why it's not visible. Convert object to a curve and it is still not converting to a curve yeah that might also be a bug but uh, let's just unmade this by hand so let's add another keyframe around there and another one around there and another one just like that now if you play back you can see we have that so that's what we're going to use to control the movement of the particles. Uh, we're going to turn this into a force. So go under the physics properties and uh, turn, it, turn it into a force field. Uh, if we increase this to about 100, let's try by 1000. Okay, it's not affecting anything. Let's change uh, the type of force to say wind. Now you can see we are animating uh, these particles based on the direction of the wind. Uh, so the problem is, is that uh, all the particles are being affected. So what I'm going to do is uh, make sure, also you can see that uh, not all particles are being affected, it's just a few of them at a time. Uh, so what I'm going to do is, uh, because I have the emission set at one and uh, another, and the end emission set at 200, uh, some of the particles are not born. Uh, that's why you see that, uh, I'm not sure if I'm explaining this correctly, but uh, yeah, basically what you want to do is have this, the start frame and the end frame uh, the same. Uh, that will make sure that uh, all the particles are moved at the same time. Uh, the problem is that uh, we want only the particles within the radius of this uh, force to be moved. So I'm just going to go select the force I go to the uh, physics tab and then I turn on the fall off. So use the maximum distance and uh, so use around this. I'm also going to change other shape to, let's see. I wanted to change to, to have some visual representation of other size of force. Okay, so. I just increase the force and I should see uh, this radius to show you uh, how much space is going to be affected by this wind and I can see now we are having that. But uh, the force is a bit too much so 5000 is a bit too much so I'm going to put, it, put this at around 100. Okay, great. I'm also, let me select the particles and play around with the rotation because I think it's not 
they're not rotating as much as I want. So let's go to the particle system again. And uh, under uh, rotation, turn on random play. Okay, no, 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 don't do that. I'll pause it for it. What is going on? Let's see. If I turn on random phase, yeah, this is what happens. That's not what we want. So make sure that you don't have that on. Okay, sometimes you just have to clear the timeline or this catch it by just scrubbing the timeline just a bit. So what we want to do is randomize the velocity, I think. No, actually not the velocity. I want to have these particles kind of <coughs> rotate at a random angle. And uh, the velocity alone is not, doesn't seem to be enough. But uh, if you turn on, if you change the object orientation axis to be a velocity and uh, play around with this. No, let's not do that. Uh, instead of doing that, instead of using uh, this random velocity, let's just use another force. So I'm going to duplicate, instead of, let me not duplicate this because it has already the keyframes and I don't want that. So let me add another force. So you can use Shift A, force field, and then uh, add a turbulence. Uh, let me go and, uh, let me first turn off the keyframes and scale this a bit up so that it's easy for us to see. And also let me change uh, this to a cube. Yeah, just for visual representation. And I'll parent it to uh, this, uh, to the wind. And, uh, yeah, so if you have the turbulence on, it will affect the entire scene like we had before. Uh, so what we're going to do is uh, also give it a, mi a minimum, a maximum distance as well, and uh, so that it's only it's only affecting the areas within uh, that uh, maximum distance. So let me in increase this maximum distance just a bit. Yeah, you can see now we're getting that rotation uh, that we wanted. Uh, let me try increasing this the size a bit to about five. This maybe to uh, let's increase this just a bit. Maybe also give it a minimum distance. Uh, this will make will will give a uh, so. All the particles within this minimum space, uh, they will have more fa more turbulence uh, than the particles uh, that are outside of the minimum space. So let's play back and see. Uh, another thing we can add. Let's duplicate this turbulence and uh, give it, spread it out a bit more. Let's try 10, actually 20. Yeah, and uh, maybe reduce the scale a bit. Let's see. Okay, so yeah, that's a bit too much. Uh, let's, let's see. And uh, I want uh, the animation to start outside uh, the plane. Make sure I mark a keyframe for that. Uh, let me slow down this simulation just a bit. And I think uh, the wind is a bit too much. <coughs> so let me reduce uh, this and maybe also 
give it some random noise and also can affect have it affect other rotation and uh, what you can do is also animate its rotation just a bit to make it a bit more interesting uh, maybe let's not do that because it's bowing things in different directions so actually let's not do that Yeah, basically that's what you can do and uh, if you add more particles or more sub if you subdivide this mesh even further you will get more particles and uh, better looking results Maybe let's give this turbulence a bit more force and see what happens Try. Okay, that's a bit too much. Uh, but so you can experiment with what works for you and uh, see what you have. But, uh, this is what I did. So I also added some camera shape to make this a bit more interesting. And uh, the way I did that is it's a uh, just select the camera and go to the physics tab and go to tab to uh, the graph editor using control tab and uh, select the z location hide it using shift h and hide sorry hide everything but the but that using fit uh shift h and go to key add f curve modifier and then add a noise modifier and uh, that should give you some vibrations and at control uh, the amount of vibration I just hit M uh, to bring up to bring up the properties key and go under the modifiers and uh, you can play with the scale here 0.5. Let's see, that's what we have. Yeah, thank you for watching.